Hello and welcome to the Pizza Kitchen. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez, and today we're joined by a very special guest, Mr. Dan Farmer of the Perfect Fried Company. Thank you so much for being here today, Dan. My pleasure, Chef Brian. I don't know about the special part, but happy to be here. <laughs> You're special to us. What are you going to be talking to us about today? So today we're going to talk about adding a commercial frying operation into your pizza operation. Okay. And the nice thing about this unit is its flexibility in that you don't need a hood to put this fryer in to work for you. Uh, this has built-in fire suppression, built-in ventilation, so if you run electric, I'll get you into the frying game. Sounds good. So this is not only good for pizzerias, it's also good for gas stations or any other kind of mom and pop situation that doesn't want to take the expense of putting in a large, expensive hood system. Absolutely. Our core markets are much like you mentioned, convenience stores, cinemas, bowling alleys, actually sushi joints, and any other place where you want to have a frying operation but don't have a hood. All right, well, it seems pretty simple. Uh, you mind showing us how to put it together? No, not at all. That's one of the simplest things about this from an operator standpoint is its ease of operations. So let's, let's build it. All right, let's do it. All right, Dan, you said this was gonna be easy. I'm seeing a lot of parts on the table here, man. Uh, it, it almost looks like a Lego kit at this point. Well, that's the beautiful thing about this. It is kind of like a Lego kit and that a kid could put it together. Now, oh, Garrett, okay. for safety standpoint, we don't want children ever operating fryers. Well, let me explain to you how easy this is. All these pieces here, and part of the beauty of this is when you take this apart, you can take the cleaning operation anywhere. And cleaning is always a bit of a headache for fryer operators. It doesn't have to be with Perfect Fry. We're going to do this once a week and break it down this way, but the main purpose to show you these pieces here is how to put the unit back together. You said the ease of cleaning. Now, I can take this to my three-bay sink. Could I put it in my uh, dishwasher? Absolutely. So starting this, this is the inside of our unit. And we're going to start first with our splash guard. Okay, splash guard's nice. It serves for two purposes. One, it's gonna keep any kind of splash off your surface for ease of cleaning. But two, gives you a little air gap. So it's gonna act as an air insulator around there so that anytime this is an operation, there's not a surface on this that you can't touch and get burnt. Oh, that's okay. actually very good. One thing we wanna take off is this unit here, and I'll show you a little bit more in depth on this. This is a cover for the electrical piece okay. so that when you're inside cleaning the in interiors, you don't get any kind of cleaning solution on the electrical connections. Keep oh. that right up there for convenience. Yeah, very convenient. Okay. okay. Next step. Then we're going to start putting the actual frying, the hardware, the, the heart of the unit together. The element sits right inside the tank. Okay. You're driving all your heat right into the oil. Very efficient. Slide that in. Line it up. And get it in place. This thing just beeped. What did that mean? Oh, so the nice thing about this, which is great, is. When you take the unit apart, it's almost a step-by-step -step guide to how to put it back together. Okay. If you saw there, this tells you heater box, which is the element. So when I put that element back in place, that goes away telling me I'm building it correctly. Much like this piece here, you've got your grease baffle and your grease tray, right? Mm -hmm. So that goes in there, and then when you set that in place, you'll see that grease filter goes away. It's amazing. So it's educating the end user on how to rebuild the machine correctly. Okay. okay? So while we got that piece in place, that's stage one of the air filtration. You've got stage two and three here. You have a HEPA filter okay. and carbon media. Now the carbon media is important because you don't want that frying smell in your operation, right? Because if you're not going to put this under a hood, I don't want a place to smell like a, a fry shop. Well, that's what's great about this. We protect our carbon media with a HEPA filter here. And that's just a good paper filter that's going to capture any of that grease laden vapor mm -hmm. because grease and carbon do not get along. And when you encapsulate that carbon with grease, it loses its ability to pull smell out of the air. Okay. So this is vital to the operation of this and kind of what separates ourselves from our competitors. And that slides into place there and you would just lock that in place. And again, Beautiful. one of my other pieces went away. List is going down. So simple. Okay. So this is my basket lift. Okay. From an operator standpoint, this is going to be important for me so that I don't overcook an item. That slides right in here. And then just links up right on the side. And then you can see my basket is gonna sit right on top of that. So when I press a button, it's gonna go into the oil. When it's done cooking, it's gonna pull stuff up out of the oil, allow it to drain, so that when I come and get the product out, which we'll show you later, it comes out good to go. And then the last piece here, hand that to me. Just a little drip tray. It slides right under there. It's going to catch any kind of extra product or oil that might be dripping off. And then, then I'm good to go. So now what we're going to do is get that tank that we had. We're going to fill that tank with oil and then put it back in the machine and get to operation. All right, so you were talking about how this uh, unit is actually going to help our pizzerias actually expand their menu. Uh, what kind of options do they have? 
Well, it certainly can, Chef Brian, and the options, a lot of them come straight from the factory. Again, this is being used by convenience stores and bowling alleys, places where, you know, the, the, they're not used to a culinary background, culinary experience. So it's push button. It comes pre-programmed with things like french fries, chicken tenures, onion rings, jalapeno poppers, mozzarella sticks, and all these programs are stuff that you can go into the menu and set yourself. So let's say you had a french fry that cooked for two and a half minutes versus mm -hmm. three and a half minutes. You can reset that time and kind of dial in you know, whatever culinary calculations you need to make for your menu, and this will spit it out however you want to and make it a push button operation for your operators. Let's start a cook cycle. What do you want to cook first? I like it. I'm going to go with manual because I think some of the products here we're going to dial into a specific thing. But let's right. go with uh, tater tots. It's a real easy process. You got your basket here. Mm -hmm. Got some product there. I don't know how it's going to slide in here. We didn't think that part out. Look at that though. Beautiful. All right. So right in here, I think our cook time was what? Three and a half minutes? Yep. Sounds about right. So 3.30, press start. Now you're going to hear that basket. Lowers into the oil, starts cooking process. So again, it's robotic cooking. I don't have any contact with the hot oil. This is doing the cooking for me. When this is done cooking, it's going to pull that product up out of the oil and wait for about 10 seconds and then give you an audible alarm letting you know the product's done cooking. Okay. That way, if I'm off doing something else and I forget about this, it's not leaving the basket in the oil, continuing to overcook the product. Yeah, it's almost fire and forget. That's it. That's it. So we've got about three minutes and we'll come back when that thing's ready to go and pull our product out and see what we got. Here we go. There we go. So at that point, I'm pulling the product up out of the oil. That stops the cooking process. Now it's going to wait about, like I said, about eight to 10 seconds. Then you're going to get that audible alarm, that lag time so that the oil drips off the product. So you're not like, grabbing right out of there. You got hot oil all over the place. Right, right. And we should get an alarm right about now. There we go. So this will be coming in here, giving a quick shake on there to make sure I separate my product. And then I'm going to loosen it up a bit. Send it out for a serving. Look at that. And that's it. Look at how golden brown these things are. Like I said, if you run electric, I'll put a frying operation wherever you can imagine. Can I taste one? Absolutely. Don't burn your mouth. But well, you're professional, it. right? We good? Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Perfect. Tastes like a tater tot. I love it. Yeah, a lot of our users worry about this thing. It's like, does it cook faster or slower than a standard fryer? And I try to explain to people, it's 350 degree oil. If some say it's to cook three minutes in 350 degree oil in one fryer, it's going to do it in this one. Right. So we'll do anything a large floor fryer can do for you. But it's also great because it has such a small footprint. I mean, that's it. 16 inches by 17 inches. I'm not asking for a lot of countertop space. Perfect. To add a lot of props to what you're doing. All right. So uh, what do you want to do next? Uh, let's try some proteins in this thing. All right. Let's throw some wings in there. Man. Again, we take our basket, put our product in there, and you're going to, anytime you're filling this basket up, because this will hold, depending on the product, right to about that line. That's going to be your submerged line. So I can get two to three orders of mozzarella sticks in here. You know, and these types of wings, these are big wings. A lot of times I can get about two orders of A-count, maybe anywhere from 12 to 16 wings in there. You're going to put that in there. Now, the wings I thought were a four-minute cook time. Okay. So again, manual, four minutes, start. And this is something that you can obviously preset when you go down to your wings on here. You can preset up four minutes it. and you just hit it at a press of a button, you're ready to cook. And I've got a chicken wing down there. And you know, the reason I said four minutes, if you think of a chicken wing, a lot of times like a raw wing is going to take anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you think about a production standpoint, you've got a fryer, you know, we try to capitalize on our small footprint for maximum mm -hmm. production. You want to get those cook times down to about four, four and a half minutes at the max because you got to turn product out for your customers. Right. So I highly recommend a pre-cooked wing when you're cooking with this unit instead of doing a full blanch and everything else. You can do it. It's just you're going to have to do a lot of prep work ahead of time. Okay. And there's the timer. And actually, that, that, that drip time actually creates a safer environment for everybody. It keeps everybody safe in the restaurant. Absolutely. People cooking, anybody else running around. And what's nice about this too, if you notice, I'm already back up to temperature. Three I'm already ready to rock. So there we go. Those look fantastic. Good All crispness right. to them. Should be ready to go. So All right. have your protein so on that our one. Crispy wings. We're going to add a little bit of, a, I guess, what would you say, buffalo sauce? Whatever sauce you can imagine. Now, that's one thing you look for. There's just a lot of pre sauce wings on the market. Pre-sauce wings are typically for baking, not for frying purposes. That's going to destroy your oil. 
So that's the nice thing about this too is you're gonna get a much more economical wing to cook because it's unfinished. If you get those pre-sauce wings, that's gonna add food cost into your mm -hmm. product that you offer. You don't need that with this because you're frying, you're not baking. Another nice thing about this is, you know, a lot of these pizza operators have tried a baked wing before. A baked wing's not gonna deliver that crispness that you can get out of frying. That's why most buffalo wings, that they came from originally, they were fried. We're gonna load it up. We got a single order of mozzarella sticks, right? Right. And again, if you remember, I can fill it up to here. So I can get, let's say I get four orders of mozzarella sticks in at mm -hmm. a time. I'm going to cook four orders of mozzarella sticks. It's not a problem with this unit. It can handle some capacity. And then what you want, something called cheese pull. That's what you want to deliver to your customer. You won't get that in baked. That's some cheese pull. All right, so I guess let's go ahead and try a few uh, fresh breaded onion rings. We got a couple I like of it. onion rings with some mozzarella lace inside. And then we also uh, breaded them. We're going to see how they work in here. Uh, let's see how they turned out, man, because like I'm, I'm really interested to see I'm how I'm more this interested works. in tasting them, but let's see how they look. I think it came oh. out just fine. Oh, beautiful. Look at these things. They're perfect. They're golden brown. They're crispy. And that's the beautiful thing about the PFC versus our other unit, is that you can do things like this and add your own signature to the frying process. So you can execute those you know, culinary masterpieces you're thinking up in the back of your head. Just dial in the, the unit once you figure out what your recipe is, and then you can deliver that recipe knowledge to every one of your employees by the press of a button. Thank you guys so much for joining us in the Pizza Kitchen. I'd like to thank our good guest, Dan Farmer, from anytime, the Perfect Chef Fry Brian, Company. Anytime, Thanks for having us out. Thanks for showing us what this Perfect Fry unit can do. Is there anything else you want to tell us about how this can help us in our pizzerias? Just, you know, we think from a Perfect Fry standpoint, this has an important place with the pizza operator. Whether it's the built-in ventilation, the built-in fire suppression, whether it's the robotic cooking and the basket lifting itself out of the oil, it just takes a lot of the pain from operating away from the operator, so you can focus on just providing something extra on your menu to put a little extra money in your pocket. Yeah, it's like uh, just having an extra employee there to remember to pull that basket out of the fryer if you forget. That's what we think. You push a button, fry and forget, just serve your customer great fried food. Fry and forget. I love that. Well, thanks so much again, Dan. Yep. Uh, we'd like to see you guys next time in the Pizza Kitchen. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez, joined by Dan Farmer of The Perfect Fried Company. We'll see you guys next time. But until then, you guys keep on frying.